Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Okay, so quadratics means the largest power of x is 2. Yeah, now there's, there's different types of quadratics you can have. At GCSE, we focus on things like x squared, then an x term, then a number. Yeah? So, when we say factorize, we're introducing brackets. Yeah, now what factorize actually means is, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. We know 12, for example, I'll show you numerically. We know 12 is 6 times 2, right? We say 6 and 2 are the factors of a number. So when we say factorize, we're basically saying rewrite that expression into the multiplication of two things. So 12, if you factorize 12, you would say something like 6 times 2 or 4 times 3. Yeah, it's just with these numbers, you can have multiple different types of factorizing. But algebraically, we're rewriting it as the multiplication of two things. Yeah. And what we're doing is the opposite of expanding. So if I had something like x plus 1 times x plus 2, then if we were to expand that, we would have x times x, which is x squared. Then we'd have x times 2, which is 2x. Then we'd have 1 times x, which is just x. And then the last term is 1 times 2, which is just 2. Yeah? Which then simplifies to x squared plus 3x plus 2. Yeah, 2x plus x is 3x. So by factorizing, we're going the other way around. Yeah, we're going from here to here. Yeah, we're saying we're rewriting x squared plus 3x plus 2 as the multiplication of two brackets. Because when we say x plus 1 and then x plus 2 next to it, that's a multiplication. So it's the same as saying 12 is 6 times 2. So when we factorize, we're reintroducing the brackets. Yeah? Now, just to keep the comparison, I'm just going to put this here. So when we expanded x plus 1, x plus 2, that gave us x squared plus 3x plus 2. Because it's going to help us um, understand how to factorize quadratics. Now, keep in mind, we're going to be progressing to the harder quadratics quite quickly. Yeah. So x squared plus 10x minus 39. I want to rewrite it as the multiplication of two brackets. OK, how do we do that? The first thing we do is we look at the last numbers. Because the last numbers must always multiply to give the last number. So because we have 39, we have to think about what options we have. Yeah, What things multiply to give 39? Well, we have 1 and 39. We have 2. 2 doesn't do it. 3 does. 3 and 13. And that's actually it, right? So we have 1 and 39, 3 and 13. The next thing you have to do is we need to decide which one are we going to pick. Is it 1 and 39 or is it 3 and 13? The next thing we do is we look at this middle number. We have the number 3. And you need to pick these numbers so that they add to give you 3. Yeah, 2 plus 1 gives you 3. So here, when we have 10, you've got to think which one of these two rows is going to give me an addition or subtraction to give me 10. Well, it's clearly going to be 3 and 13, yeah? 1 and 39 can never add or subtract to give you 10, right? So once we pick the right line, we just do two brackets. We say x and x, because remember, x times x gives you that first term of x squared. And then you put in 3 and 13. Yeah? Then using those numbers, this is the easy bit. You're saying using these numbers, 3 and 13... How do you make 10? Well, I think we all know to make 10, you have to do 13 minus 3. Yeah, you have to do 13 minus 3. And when we say 13, we mean a plus 13. So we need a plus 13 and a minus 3, and that's factorized. Yeah? Now, let's check the next one. x squared minus 3x minus 28. So ignore the, the signs. What options do we have for 28? We have 1 and 28. We have 2 and 14. We have, does 3 go? 3 doesn't go into 28. 
uh, 4. 4 does go into 28. It goes in 7 times. Then you try 5. 5 doesn't go into 28. 6 doesn't go into 28. Then we get back to 7, so we repeat ourselves. So, we've addressed the 28, and we've written the multipliers. Let's just do two brackets. We have x and x to give x squared. And then from there, you're saying, okay, which numbers would make the number 3? Well, it's clearly the 4 and the 7, right? So we put 4 in there, and we put 7 in there. Then you're saying, how do I make minus 3? Well, if you want to make minus 3, you need a, well, if you had the numbers 4 and 7, to make negative 3, you would do 4 take away 7. Yeah, 4 take away 7 is minus 3. And when I say 4 take away 7, I mean plus 4 take away 7. And that's factorized. Part C. Now, this is actually an interesting question. So what students do with this question is they try and do two brackets. And they forget what they were taught in year 7. When you guys were in year 7 and you first did factorizing, you didn't do quadratics. You did the very basics of factorizing, which is to take out a common factor. Look out for questions where there is no number at the end. Can you see here? There's no number. That means you can do the most basic type of factorizing, which is look at both of these terms, 6x squared and 12x. And you look at what's common in both. I see an x in both. Yeah, both terms have an x. And what numbers are in both? Ah, 6 goes into both 6 and 12. So we can take out a 6 and an x. And then we think about what's left. The way we do it is we say, look, what do you have to multiply 6x by to get 6x squared? Or 6x times another x would make the two x's multiply to give you x squared. So it'd be x minus, now 6x times what gives you 12x? Well, you just have to double it, right? 6x times 2 gives you 12x. So you have x minus 2, and that's your solution. So if there's no number at the end, it's the most basic type of factorizing, you just look at common terms. Yeah, so I'm only including that just so you're careful. Difference of two squares, so I'm showing you lot um, all the combinations of factorizing. Now, difference of two squares. There is a very special type of factorizing which you guys need to be aware of. Up here, if you had something like x plus 1 times x minus 1, so you can see that the brackets are very much the same. It's just the signs are different in the middle. Yeah, these signs are different in the middle. Look at what happens when we expand the brackets. These are different color. So we have the standard x times x gives you x squared. Then we have x times minus 1, which is just negative x. 1 times x is just x. Yeah, 1 times anything is just itself. Then we have 1 times minus 1, which is just minus 1. What you notice is that the middle terms cancel. And we're just left with x squared minus 1. So, what you need to be aware of is when you have the same brackets, just the signs are different uh, in the middle, when you expand, the middle terms always cancel each other out. Yeah, like you can see the minus x cancel with the plus x. Now, the reason we call it difference of two squares is because here we have x squared. Because it's x squared, we call it a square number. And then we say what things or what thing squared gives you x squared. Well, that's just x. x times x gives you x squared. And then we put the x's here. x times x gives you x squared. Then the last number is 1. 1 is also a square number. What times by itself gives you 1? Well, the answer is 1. And you can see that here, 1 and 1. And then the last thing is we call it difference of two squares because we're doing a subtraction here, yeah? And whenever it's a, when you recognize it's a difference of two squares, you always have plus and minus. So you have to remember that you have to change the sign in the middle because 
That way, when you expand, the middle terms cancel. Yeah, we always want the middle terms to cancel. So we have plus and minus so that the pluses and the minuses cancel each other out. You can read it. It says plus one and minus one. Plus one and minus one, they cancel each other out, right? So this is something you guys need to be able to spot. So when I see x squared minus four, I notice that x squared is a square number and four is a square number and that we're taking the difference between the two. So I do two brackets. I notice this difference of two squares, so it has to be x and x. What squared gives you four? It's two and two. And then we remember that we want the middle terms to cancel out, right? So we do plus and minus. That's your solution. All right, taking this similar concept here, we have 49. Well, 49, you can have seven and seven. Then you just go um, bit by bit. So for 36, we're going to have 6. For p squared, we're going to have p. And for q squared, you're going to have q. And you just have plus and minus. Yeah, nice and simple. All right, now, the concepts are still the same. So the last number being 1, we need to only use numbers that multiply to give one. So let's do two brackets. There's only one combination, one and one. Now, the next thing we have to think about is it's two x squared. We need to think about two things that multiply to give two x squared. Now there's only one combination for that, and that's two x, times x. Only 2x times x can multiply to give 2x squared. If 2 wasn't the number 2, because 2 is a prime number, the only option is 2x and x. If it was 4x squared, then it's different. We could have 4x and x, or we could have 2x and 2x. So it becomes different. But because we're dealing with a prime number, being 2, we only have one option, 2x and x. Now, this is something we're going to practice. This is When it comes to like harder quadratics, when we factorize, there's an element of trial and error. Now, there's going to come a time where you don't need to do this trial and error, but at the beginning, I'm going to show you what you do with the trial and error so that you never get it wrong. So we've set it up in such a way that all we need to decide is what the signs are. So this is what you do. You start to expand the brackets, but you do not need to do the 2x and the x because we've already decided it gives us 2x squared and we don't need to worry about the ones because they multiply to give you one. Um, so that's all right. So we've got, we've decided, look, 2x and x, one and one. The only thing we need to decide on is the signs, yeah? So you, you start to expand the bracket. Let's see what happens. So the 2x and the x we know gives you 2x squared, but it's the middle terms that's important. So this, when you multiply that out, it gives you 2x, right? And this gives you x. You think, how does 2x and x make 3x? Well, it's if you add them, right? If you do 2x plus x, it would give you 3x, which is the middle term. So all you need is plus and plus. And that's your answer. Okay, now how do we use this stuff? We want to simplify algebraic fractions. Now these are really easy. Once you know how to factorize, all of these questions are so basic, you'll see. Simplify this fraction, x plus four over x squared plus two x minus eight. The way we simplify algebraic fractions is we factorize everything as much as possible and then cancel like terms. So put a bracket around the x plus four, it can't be factorized, but in the bottom, we have x squared plus 2x minus 8. So we have x and x. What makes 8? We have 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Now use the top to help you out there. Because it's x plus 4, I know I'm going to be using 2 and 4. 2 and 4. Okay, we need to make a plus 2. How do we get plus 2? Is if we do 
plus 4, subtract 2. And there you go, it's factorized. Then you can see on the top and the bottom, there's an x plus 4. So we could cross it out, they cancel each other out. So what we left with, we're left with a 1 on top. Yeah, when we cancel things out, don't just think it's 0. We're dividing top and bottom by x plus 4, so there's still a 1 on top. But on the bottom there, we're just left with x minus 2.